Hello. <clears throat> Merry Christmas and all that jazz. Welcome to my stream yet again. Uh, this time I'm doing Link to the Past. Not randomized, but a Redux version, which is really, really close to vanilla. I'll explain it very shortly. But I was informed that I don't have a proper playthrough of Link to the Past on my Full Sauce channel. And I knew that that could not be right. It was... it was right. So... There's almost nothing I want to, like, do more on, like, a... a holiday than play one of the games I grew up with. So... This seemed right, very much like the moon. So yeah, uh, um, this is really very close to the original version, to the point where I consider this to be as much of a vanilla Link to the Past playthrough as you can get without doing vanilla. But it seemed interesting, so I, it, little quality of life stuff, some minor visual tweaks. I'll let the intro run for a bit. I mean, Aghanim, I don't think was red, originally. The King is also red. Yeah, so there's like minor uh, changes to, I think, make it more accurate to the art. And the uh, instruction booklet. God, that sucks. But outside of randomizers, I haven't played Link to the Past properly in full in years. So this is something that I've been looking forward to. I mean, I've been thinking about playing it again anyway, but then when someone in chat was like, No, Vinny, you don't have a playthrough of this on full sauce. I was just waiting for the right time. And, uh... Again, that's Christmas. You know, you know what else is cool? I couldn't press the button. Okay, now I can press the button. You ready for... Boring playthrough name? Hell yeah. Link. Every time. Always Link. So, what is the Redux version? Redux version is... Um couple changes added on top of the DX version. So someone made a DX version with just some slowdown reduces, um, bug fixes, L and R to switch between weapons, um, break pots with sword, collect items with sword, and stuff like that. Right? And then the this version makes Link's hair cl uh, closely match his original artwork. Um, so, in other words, no pink hair on Link. Chat's already pissed. I can do an optional patch to restore Link's pink hair. Chat, do you want this? All right. The chat has spoken, and, as usual, it was a jumbled mess of varied responses. So here's what I'm gonna do. I was this close to doing the patch anyway, before I started up, and then I was like, you know what, no, I want chat to see this. Because I, I knew that Snoke Dog, I, I knew that someone would be upset, and maybe three or four someones. So, I got gotcha. you. Listen, I got gotcha. you. I got you covered. It's Christmas, 
just call me Santa Claus because I am delivering the gift of pink haired Link. There we go. You had to see blonde hair Link for just a second, but now it's, it's gone. Don't worry, blonde hair Link isn't real. He can't hurt you. Alright, help me. I'm a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zeld. The priest, Aghanim, has done something to the other missing girls. Now only I remain. Aghanim has seized control of the castle and is now trying to open the Seven Sages' seal. I'm in the dungeon of the castle. Please help me. Link, I'm going out for a while. I'll be back by morning. Don't leave the house. Oh, they changed the inventory menu, too. Uh-oh. I think it looks good. We'll see. Just remember, this is um, no more um, patches. That's it. No more patches, everybody. But you got pink hair, Link. That's the compromise. Um, other things that are different are... The good bee's name has been changed to Golden Bee. The flute is now called an ocarina, you know, as it is an ocarina. Uncle Sprite has been changed to match official artwork. Aghanim's colors match official artwork. Uh, Pegasus' shoes are now called Pegasus' boots. You did it. You made it to the stream. This is 8-7. For Pixel Perfect. No, that's the useless changes, are the, the Redux versions. Nothing crazy. You must rescue Princess Zelda. Our people are fated to do so, but do not fall victim to fate, Link. I shall always remember our time together. That seems a little different, too. This is going to be like the Mario World playthrough yesterday, where I'm like, is that the same? Uh, but the DX version changes a number of things. Like, it makes the... Um, Ice Palace have the layout from the GBA version. Plus you can do this, which you couldn't normally do. Zelda, she is your sister. Let's do this. Is this a full playthrough? It will be. Because again, I have an, a full playthrough of Link to the Past outside of a rando on my channel. And there's a part of me that just really wants to get the, um, the Link to the Past full experience. No, I see Among Us in the lamp. Oh, fuck. Got a little dumpy, too. I'm sorry, chat member, but I have to remove you from the chat members. So yeah, I'll, I'll explain Link to the Past. I'm sure it needs no introduction, but I'm going to explain it anyway. What did Santa bring you? A Beatles shirt. And sheets from my bed. So, yeah, it's the correct sizes. It's fine. Christmas gets weird when you get older.
No, I didn't get any socks, though. Someone sent me duck socks to my P.O. Box. Not too long ago. And they're just green, real ducks. As opposed to green, fake ducks. Agamemnon is the name of the enemy in this game, yeah. So, Link to the Past... This version, like I said, does not change a whole lot. But being able to switch items with L and R is nice. And... I'm wondering if there's a version of the randomizer that allows you to do that too, because that that's kind of cool. See, I'm so used to Link to the Past rando at this point, that I'm half expecting 10 arrows. See, so you can see the menu. Peep the menu, and then if you need to, you go like this. Massive. LNR is a feature of the randomizer. Oh, sick. Your audio is spiking sometimes. Is it really? Let me check my uh, sound settings, because I was hearing a little bit of crust. I, I reviewed some of my footage from yesterday, and people were saying it was a little crusty. And I listened, and there was definitely a little bit of crust. Like, not on my voice, but like background noise. So here, I'm gonna mute this for a second. Can you let me know if you hear any extra crust more than usual? Also, I'm not clipping. My audio settings are exactly the same, so that, that person was incorrect. All right, so then there's no crust. When I first got this game, and I was six years old... And it might have been Christmas, by the way. Like, it very well may have been Christmas. But I, that guy, I died to... I, I died to that guy a couple times. Thank you, Link. I had a feeling you were getting close. Link, listen carefully. The priest is magically controlling all the soldiers in the castle. I fear the worst for my father. The priest is an inhuman fiend with strong magical powers. Do you understand? Not at all. Let's get out of here before the priest notices. I know a secret path, but first we have to go to the first floor. Anyone here never play Link to the Past or never watch it? There are people. Okay, no, there are people. I mean, there's people who say me with a happy face, and I know that you're... When, the, when I see that happy face, I'm like... I don't know. I don't trust that happy face. But I know there are people who have never played it. And I can tell you a couple things. One, this game has cool music. Uh, two, this game is good. Uh, three, it is a Zelda game. Zelda 3, specifically. And it is my third favorite game of all time. Now, part, part of that is nostalgia, because I played it so much, and I have, like, a lot of good memories, but it holds up really well. What's 1 and 2? Chrono Trigger and then Super Metroid. I don't remember what number four was. That might have been Half-Life. I don't know, my list is on the internet. I have an, a list of, of game. Uh, Secret of Mana is not in my top ten. It's somewhere, but it's it's got some problems. That's a game that didn't really age all that great in many ways, but I still love it. What's it called? Google Sheets? Link Between Worlds is great. I'd like to revisit that one day. 
top 100 games. So I got Chrono Trigger, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Half-Life, Metal Gear Solid, Super Mario Bros. 3, Symphony of the Night, Resident Evil 4, Final Fantasy 9 is number 9, Warcraft 3, Super Mario World, Eternal Darkness, Ocarina and Majora, because I copped out and I didn't know how to uh, choose between the two. So I, I put them together. And um, Mario Sunshine, weird, weirdly enough, I think I might that might go down a bit, just because I, that changes. Um, Skies of Arcadia is number 15, Spelunky, Final Fantasy VII, Metroid Prime, Final Fantasy VI, Half-Life 2, Kid Icarus Uprising, Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64, Smash Brothers, Ultimate is fine, I wrote. Diablo 2 is 25, Portal 2, Castlevania 4, Wind Waker, Metal Gear Solid 3, Binding of Isaac. Those are my top 30. Made this list maybe before Spelunky 2 came out, so... <clears throat> that was Spelunky 1. That would change, I think. If I remade the list now, there would be some differences. Yes, Persona 5 is in the top 10. Super Mario RPG. I have that at number 47. Not even a Monster Hunter game. I love Monster Hunter. But it's also hard to choose because I put 67, Monster Hunter, World, or Try. That's what I put. Try was my first. World is, I think, at the time, the best. Skies of Arcadia seems high. Dog. One of the best RPGs ever. It's also... It's kind of like, you know, my, my personal lists. And stuff. Where's Breath of the Wild? I got that at... 37. I made a video about this. Granted, I don't remember the list myself, so this is kind of interesting to revisit. Have you considered making a top 100 games that aren't prehistoric? Okay, Fortnite and Mucus, uh, Meta, this universe Meta. Okay, what else do you need in there? Apex Legend, Undertale, DMC2. DMC3 is on my list. Prehistoric. <laughs> Sorry, Death Loop is 1 to 5. Someone said something about boomer games. Well, sorry I was born in 1985. Next time I'm a spermatozoa, I will choose to be born in the year of our millennial. So that way I can like cool dances as well. <laughs> Is Mother 3 on there? Yeah. Stop replying to trolls. No, 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 I like- I actually really enjoy them right now, because... Um... I don't know, I'm kind of having fun. Princess Zelda. You are safe. Is this your doing, Link? Trolls need Chris Christmas gifts too, exactly, chat member. It was Link who helped me escape from the dungeon when I was captive. The priest said, Once I have finished with you, the final one, the seal of the sages will open. Link, you must not let the land of Hyrule fall into the priest's clutches. You can't let him release the seal. This game is garbage. Look at this exposition dump. 
I sense a mighty evil force guide you. Sorry, guides the priest's actions and augments his magical power. The only weapon potent enough is the legendary master sword. So you you need to go to the village elder. All right. Do you understand? What? Meet the Elder of the Village and get the Master Sword. Link, be careful out there. I know you can save Hyrule. What's your favorite piece of media from this year? Well, Metroid Dread was my favorite game of the year. Um... Dune movie was pretty fucking amazing, because then I ended up reading Dune and getting really into it. Um, you'll see my list of favorite games of the year soon. Favorite piece of media. Billie Eilish. Album of New. I am happy, finally. The Blonde Years. I don't know any, um, I don't know any specific songs of William Eyelashes, I'm sorry to say. But, from what I heard, she delivers some really great, low-sounding ASMR to some sick FL beats. The, I, the bad guy. William Eyelashes is the bad guy. And that's all I know about William Eyelashes. That, and I know she did a James Bond theme. Imagine that. Imagine going from, like, being that famous, or being, like, nobody um, in the world of music, so to speak, and then your brother makes a bunch of beats, you sing on them, you get super popular, super quick, and then James Bond himself is like, can you do a song for me? Mental. I know I'm happy for her. I don't mind. I, I think it's cool. The only thing I mind is when they um, didn't use Radiohead's Spectre or Man of War song. Because the song they ended up choosing, I didn't enjoy very much. That's a personal choice. You know? I thought the Radiohead songs were very good, and they, they could have chose either of those two. So, that's that's me. There's been some terrible James Bond music. You didn't enjoy Skyfall? No, 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 Skyfall I loved. Adele... killed it. Skyfall was great. Favorite James Bond intro music? I like... Um, you Only Live Twice by Nancy Sinatra. I love Live and Let Die by Paul McCharmley. I like the Chris Cornell one. You know my name. I hate the Jack White one. Oh, it's so bad. And I love Jack White's music. I fucking hate that theme. Hey, here's Link, the wanted man. Soldiers, anyone, come quick. <laughs> I always enjoyed that part of Link to the Past. Top five Bond movies. Uh, there's a lake swimming with Zoras at the source of the river. I mean, I know this game so well. I almost don't want to Like stop to read the stuff But at the same time, I do want to en enjoy the the world of Link to the Past Um, I can give you in no particular order Casino Royale, Goldeneye, Goldfinger Skyfall And from Russia with love. <laughs> How about some of the classics? Okay. Octopussy. Octopeepy. Octopotty.
This old lady is so nice. Oh, Link, the rumors say you kidnapped the princess, but I still trust you. You know what? She's a sweet old lady. That's why I'm going to have to bomb her wall. Octorok. Octoling. But you know what? As nice as this old lady is, she keeps a chicken in a jar. A little weird. You, sir, have you been going through life without one of my hold anything bottles? Well, step right up and make your life complete. I've got one on sale right now for the low, low price of a hundred rupees. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Now hold it above your head for the whole world to see, okay? It's good for business. Very self aware. Hold it above your head. One of these chickens is a real person. Or, like, they become a person. When I get magic powder... When I first played this game, I was blown away. Because I discovered it seemingly on my own. And I sprinkled it, uh, a chicken with the magic powder and it became a person. And I was like, wait, what? Here's another little secret. First of all, is that Mario or is that Hario? I don't know, it says H. But then when you do this... Anyone ever know about that? I'm sure many of you have, but for those that haven't, that was another cool little thing I discovered as a uh, child. I played this game many times. I played this game to the point where I left it on before school. So when I came back home, uh, it would be in the same spot. I wouldn't shut the system off. But then there were times where my mom would turn the system off. And I'd be like, no! Who? Oh, it's you, Link. What can I do for you, young man? The Elder? Oh, no one has seen him since the priest began collecting victims. What? Master Sword? Well, I don't remember the details exactly, but... Long ago, a prosperous people known as the Hylians inhabited this land. Legends tell of many treasures that the Hylians hid throughout the land. Master Sword, a mighty blade forged against those evil hearts is one of them. People say that now it is is sleeping deep in the forest. Do you understand? Anyway. Look for the Elder. There must be someone in the village who knows where he is. Someone said, Skip, this old lady is cringe. She's eating green dots. Peas? Well, peas aren't square. Yeah, it needs a little bit more peas. Fuck yeah. Put them on there. Oh god. Oh, you fucking donkey. Christmas today, um, Guy Fieri was on TV, doing his thing, and then also Once Upon a Time in New York, which has a pretty graphic scene, and my family's just in there, you know, and, uh, and then suddenly graphic scene comes on, I'm like, hmm, that's not good. Anyone else? Look at that. Post internet and. Did they get banned? Yeah, they got banned.
Well, this looks like one of the things, one of the dudes from Earthbound. Look like you might have an interesting destiny, might I tell your fortune. Nah. No, actually, this guy is cringe. Truthfully. The orb pondering usually doesn't yield very positive results. Yeah, the rocks saying eight, I think, are just a design. I always wondered, like, eight? What do you need eight for? That was always a strange design choice. Did you ever play Link to the Past with your cousin? Yeah, I mean, we we traded off. We would play, and I would, you know, be terrible, and he would play and be better, and then eventually I became the, the real gamer. But one of the reasons I love this game is, much like other Zelda games, you didn't really have internet and if you were lucky, you found a magazine with a guide. So a lot of figuring things out on your own happened. And the world seemed so, like, vast. And also... Sometimes, like, people would tell you things, like secrets. Not that cousin. No, ne never that cousin. As I've said 155 times. Never the Lobot cousin. Never him. Vinny, all of his family is just one cousin. Well, yeah, they merge. They merge into, like, a super cousin. The Omega cousin. That's, like, part of their special abilities. I guess I could have got the magic powder now, right? How do you access the map? Oh. I thought it was like, um, select. I played, no, I played a million times. Not only that, but there's a limited amount of buttons on the Super Nintendo controller, and I still ask the chat, Hey, how do you access the, uh, that, uh, the map? Every time I kill an enemy in Link to the Past, I hear Shadoobi Wop. So. Vinny, what were you doing in the year 2003? Uh, going to college. I am indeed Sazrahala, the village elder and descendant of the Seven Sages. Oh, really, Link? I'm surprised a young man like you is searching for the Sword of Evil's Bane. Not just anyone can use that weapon. Legends say that only the hero who has won the three pennants can wield the sword. Do you really want to find it? Yeah! Good. As a test, can you retrieve the Pendant of Courage from the East Palace? If you bring it here, I will tell you more of the legend. And give you a magical artifact. I need a bomb. Weird how, like, time exists. Well, that's the thing about the Get Back documentary movie thing that Peter Jackson made that blows my mind, is in my mind, Paul McCartney is 26 years old, but also 79 at this very moment. 
because I had never spent that much time watching them. And so it kind of like overwrote my memories of who they are. And seeing them like full of energy and bouncing around and, and you know, just being young, it gave me some like bizarre existential problems a couple nights in a row. Uh, I got over it. <laughs> I got over it, but it was weird. I mean, to me, Kurt Cobain is still, as he looked, those couple years where Nirv Nirvana was, was famous when I was real young. And he obviously did not live past 27, so no one knows what that dude looked like, or would have looked like if he got older. But he would have been, what, like, 54 or 5 or so? So yeah, time is... Flat circle. Conspiracy... Fake Paul conspiracy? I think the fake Paul cons conspiracy... ...was funny... ...because people... ...it proves that people will kind of believe... ...a thing if there's enough... ...connected dots. And the thing is with the Paul is dead conspiracy is there are. And then I think the Beatles themselves played with it. They toyed with it a bit. So, that's... You know, and then, like, uh, years later, people came up with new theories, and... There was, like, some interview with the real Paul McCartney, who was living a peaceful life. He's like, yeah, no, my name is Paul, this is where he grew up. Yeah, I quit the Beatles because it was too weird. And it was just some fucking, like, Liverpudlian weirdo. And it, it, you know what I mean? Like, so... Yeah. Vinny, I'm- is Vinny drinking any holiday cheer this year? No. Have you seen the Star Wars Bigger Luke conspiracy? <laughs> I've propagated it. You can use the treasure hidden in this palace to defeat armored foes. Time is a flat circle, man. Okay, we need the big key. In this game, you need the big key to open the big chest. Question. Were there any other Zelda games where you needed the big key to open the item chest? How about Link Between Worlds? no items in the dungeons and, like, between worlds. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, like, upgrades for your sword. There's, like, chunks of, like, metal or something. I still love the way the, uh, MIDI sound in this game. Just the Super Nintendo sound chip. The samples. Why Link hair pink? Because I patched it back to pink from blonde. Even though originally it's pink and blonde was the patch. It's been double patched. But yeah, no, Link was going through it. He was just having a weird time. He was listening to my B bloody Valentine a little bit. Around now. And, uh... I always forget that you can kill these dudes with a sword.
I see the big eye, and I'm like, oh, that's a uh, bow and arrow. You need to shoot that with an arrow. Ugh. First death. First death in the first dungeon. I've played this game a million times. No, 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 no. It's it, that. That's good. You got to create a little bit of suspension if you're gonna. Be a pro gamer. No. What's your least favorite Zelda game? I've uh, usually cited Spirit Tracks because I never finished it. Vinny, are you going to try out the Inscription DLC? Yeah. When it's done. Like, not DLC, it's a patch. For the first act to be roguelike. I'll check it out when it's, like, more balanced. Because right now it's in early access. Man, I was really at, like, the last part of that area that needed to be done. Each and every time. Because I, I was walking into the fucking red orb things. What are those things called? Orbs? Anti-fairies? Okay. Orbs. They're like blue toads, which I just call bloads. I mean, listen, the problem with this game is that it's- it's too hard. You- you see how much... I have to deal with? Look at all this stuff. Got anti-fairies, got tentacles. And I got like five kills in a row in Halo the other day, so... I'm pretty good at gamers. But this is just too hard. Five arrows. Do these skeletons like bombs? Wow, wow, I'm gonna die again. I only had one bomb, that's nice. Prehistoric taste in gaming, huh? You want to talk about real games. Back in my day, when the game was the game. That's kind of where I draw the line. Like, I have no nostalgia for those games. Because I didn't grow up with them. The only one I really kind of grew up with was Asteroids, because there was a free PC version that I played in the early, um, sorry, the mid-90s. I don't have the bug-catching net, so I can't catch fairies at the moment. Otherwise, I'd go down into the fairy pit.
I like that rupees have a nice chunky kind of sound in this game. You get the, the rupee noise, but you also get the, um... I don't know if it's like the, the counter of the money going up. But I think the... Yeah, I think it might be because the larger denominations give you more of that sound. It's nice. I was going to play more of that Mario thing today, but I wasn't really, um, wasn't really down for it. Not only that, but I'm not going to be here for that long. Maybe like another hour twenty? Hour and a half? So I figured I could do a little bit of that, a little bit of this, or I could do more of this. And I was more in the mood for Zelda. But I will do more of the Mario thing over the next couple, maybe weeks? I mean that, and then there's the Mario 64 thing, which I'm inevitably going to get lost in, even though someone printed out a map. Or, not printed a map. <laughs> someone made a map for it. Yeah, the liminal cursed Mario 64. Thoughts on Cruelty Squad. Didn't click when I played it. I get it's like the most crusty, most amazing thing, and like only chads play it and are aware of it and love it. I tried, and I was just not enthralled by it this is the way some people have been. I acknowledge how fucking cool it can be, and I think more games like that would be nice. But I'm terrible at it. There you go. Vinny, have you played any of the BS Zelda games? The only Zelda game I thought was bullshit was probably Spirit Tracks. Because the, the train wouldn't let you have freedom. No, I've played the BS Zelda stuff. Favorite Fortnite skin? Radiohead. Oh, you got the Pendant of Courage. Now I will tell you more of the le- Wait, wait, no, that's not in there. Radiohead is in, um, Fall- Fall Lads. Three or four generations ago, an order of knights protected the Hylian royalty. These knights of Hyrule were also guardians of the Pendant of Courage. Unfortunately, most of them were destroyed in the Great War against evil that took place when the Seven Sages created their seal. Among the descendants of the Knights of Hyrule, a hero must appear. I see. Link, I believe you. You should get the remaining pendants. And carry this with you. It's a treasure passed down by the families of the Sages. I want you to have it. Radiohead is also in Fortnite. What a weird fucking timeline. The last time I played Fortnite was when Thanos was introduced. That was it. I checked out Thanos. Thanos the Manus. I, he was um, very powerful and uh, it was weird. And then that was it. Let's 
Okay, I have to go get the bug catching net. Aren't there apples in these trees? I guess not these ones. Yo, we're going to Tomato Town, dude! No one's gonna survive the Tomato Town Massacre, dude! Crazy! We dropped in all the optimal locations! Dropping in all the optimals! What's the next big thing in video games that is going to blow up, like, Fortnite and Among Us? There's no predicting. There's absolutely no predicting. Everything from memory? Uh, God, I hope. NFTs? Well, Ubisoft is trying real hard to get that to happen. And Stalker 2 is like... Stop writing us angry emails. We'll take them out of the game. And Ubisoft is like, no, it's future. Please give us chance to make money. I mean, and gaming with fungi, fungu bull. Among Us VR. I mean, it's cool, but I don't know if VR is going to be the next big thing yet. It needs that one killer app, and I don't think Among Us is it. Because again, VR chat. I've done Almagus in VR chat, and it was. Cool, actually. It was even better than the original. But I don't think it's gonna take off to the point where everyone... Like, there's gonna be headset shortages. Can I get the ice rod yet? Do I have... ...requirements to do so? Oh wait, this isn't it anyway. VR is very expensive. It is. And again, I don't really like what Facebook has done with their whole thing, and then they're rebranding and calling themselves a different thing. So there's a whole lot of issues I have with Meta and Facebook's entry into VR and what they're doing to the market by segmenting it. But I really love VR. And I can see where the, the next leap could occur with, like, eye-tracking, smaller headsets. I mean, I talked about it in the last VR chat thing I did, but I, I enjoy it for the right game. Like, super hot VR kind of shit. Blade and Sorcery, Half-Life Alex. it's all... Like, that shit is amazing. But then you, you know, just chat with people in VR, and that's actually kind of good, too. But, um... I mean, it, the headsets are still pretty clunky. The index is not too heavy, and it's not too uncomfortable, in my opinion. But it's still a giant piece of machinery on your face. Not giant, but it's it's big enough that you notice it. And, in, you know, if you're watching a movie, like we watched Dune, David Lynch Dune in VR, in a VR theater. And it was fun, and it was good to be able to talk to people during the movie, because that movie absolutely is worthy of discussion while you're watching it. But I think the next big leap in gaming is going to be... Hmm. There's going to be maybe a breakthrough game where you can have up to 100,000 people in the same server. Doing what? I don't know. I have no idea. Smelling each other, I guess. Uh, sex? Well, you know, sex usually leads the, the way for the next emerging technologies. So, you you know, you're not wrong.
eight seconds. Piece of heart. Hell yeah. The next leap is you die in the game, you die in real life. I think the concept of actually playing a game and when you fail, you can never play the game again. Oh, cool rupee amount. Um, I think there's some potential to that. It has to be a free game. It has to be a game that is broadcast heavily. It has to have a real-life reward. And there has to be lots of people playing. That exists? Yeah, I guess so then, yeah. Well, that could be even further. Maybe that? Like, squid game? I, I hate to say it, but maybe <laughs> a squid game type thing? Where you watch, like, five ads and you're granted entry? And then there's a prize pool of, like, $10,000. And, um, each match is broadcast, and there's, like, 10,000 people per match. That sounds mega dystopian. Yeah. Uh... Merry Christmas to you, Joel, as well. Hope you had a good one. Fall Guy or Among Us? I guess it's kind of the same shit. It's not like a new gameplay concept, it's just adding money to it, and when you die, you never can play again. I can't go out because I'm sick. People say I caught this cold from the evil air that's coming down off the mountain. It's my bug catching net. I'll use it when I'm better, but for now I'll lend it to you. There's Hario again. Evil air. Wow, even in this game, there's evil air. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, I can't think of... I can't really think of a new gameplay concept off the top of my head, but if you give me... Give me another day, I'll, I'll invent a new type of video game that's never been seen before. I'm sure. No problem. Easy. The fact that when you walk into a wall in a video game, your character, like your cape, clips through it, that's still something we haven't really solved, have we? Not 100%, at least. Uh, some games you have. Some games they can, like, give uh, a specific animation. It's hard to fix, but there's, there's still some, like, problems. Like, when you nut in the game, you don't nut in real life. Like, stuff like that we haven't really solved yet. So... It's easier to do when you don't have huge weapon and armor variety. My biggest pet peeve in, in gaming that I don't actually care about, but I'm gonna use it as a, a point of conversation, is when you get a cool new piece of armor and a shield and a cape, but then your cape goes through your shield and you have to walk around the world staring at the clipping through the shield. It has absolutely nothing to do with the gameplay. It doesn't affect anything or anyone but it just looks like shit. Could you believe it? The year is 2022, and capes still clip. I mean, we could probably, like, with raw power, just raw horsepower, write some kind of, like, code for that. But that would be, like, 2030, maybe? By then, by then you could just brute force that code.
Why horses? Well, horses run inside your video uh, graphics cards. What's your horse's name? Uh, the ones from Gladiator. Falafel and Argento, or something like that, I don't know. The smell of rotten fruit. If you give me that mushroom, I can finish my brew. How would you brute force code? Well, I don't know. I'm a dummy. But what I can say is... Um, with emulation, you can sometimes... If I'm not mistaken, you can, like, just... Overpower the emulation to make it as accurate as possible. Is that... Accurate? Like, if you just have, um... No? Not accurate. I, there's a way to describe it. I'm not describing correctly. Press button until work. Like, instead of having to optimize it, you can just... Like, I'll give you an example. GTA... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna try my best, though. GTA Remastered, Grove Street Games, instead of optimizing it for the Switch, they were, were hoping that it would just run. And on the, the stronger hardware, it runs a little bit better. No, this is a bad example. Okay, no. Um, hmm. So there's horses inside the GPU. Alright? And as they run, you get more power for your games. You can throw a lot of power at it, but it tends to affect other areas of performance. Well, that's why I think you need to... I, I say this is a non-programmer, but maybe go in with a fine-tooth comb and really make sure your code, you know, is good, and not just, like, you're throwing extra horsepower at it. That's my understanding, but I don't... You know, I'm sure Sphinx is, like, sitting there with his arms crossed, like, Oh god, what is this dude talking about? You gotta comb it. With, you gotta comb it like you would brush a horse. Yeah, added a jaguar. That's why they called the system the Atari Jaguar, because they figured it was a fast animal, therefore fast graphics. Oh, I didn't give the witch the mushroom. Wow, I'm a dummy. I thought that automatically just gave her the mushroom. Come back to the shop later. Oh, Jesus. God damn it. This whole time I've been trying to get the, um, the sprinkle powder so I can make, um, I want to make the chicken into a person. Fuck you! No, give me the mushroom! Joel, what is that emote? What are you, what, who is that, a spin? Friend spin, oh. That's pretty good, actually. Vinny, go into the shop for the powder. I've played this game hundreds of times. Hundreds. Is that a blunt that's spinning? Whose emote is blunt spin? Oh, that's a fish. And Mike, that's Mike's emote, okay. Anyway, there's fish inside your computers that make things run. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Okay, so now I can do it. I can show you. This is not at all relevant to the game, but I think it's important that people know that in the universe of Hyrule, if a witch brews you a magic powder, you never have to be alone.
Watch. Again, it's the old lady. I'm thinking the old lady's a witch and turned a person into a chicken. And it's up to me to turn the chicken back into a person. So I think it's this one. Let's see. If my memory serves. No? No? Oh. No, 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 A different house, different house. Memory does not serve, but different house. You st oh! Can't believe you caught me. With your speed, it must have been easy to kidnap Zelda. You don't look like such a bad guy, though. Anyway, uh, because you have such quick feet, it might be a good idea to run and bash into many things. For example, the trees in this village have many useful things hanging from their branches. Why not just try it, okay? I think it's maybe... Mm. No, there's no chicken in here. This is the Mario house. H Hario. This is the Haribo house. There's the weathercock. It's this lady. This lady's a witch. And turned this poor person into a chicken. Told you! Cluck, cluck, what? You've turned me into a human. I can't even speak. Ha. Huh. It must be you who is always teasing my friends. The weathercock is always watching you harass them. Well, this human shape is uncomfortable for me. Ah, I want to be a chicken again. Cluck, cluck. I mean, if, if you're into granny cream... ...and you have some... ...magic powder... Top 10 linked to the past mysteries that you haven't known. Number 1. Turn a chicken into an old lady. Number 2. Bomb the house for some bombs. Number 3. Golden bean. Number 4. Unlock the door. Number 5. I've got eyes. Number 6. Eat some dicks. Number 7. Go to heaven. Number eight, Aghanim Circlet looks like an oafish mouth being open all the time, but it's not! Number nine, did you know that there was a red poisonous frog that could get you really high if you just lick its asshole? <laughs> Why Link hair pink? Link hair always pink in this game. <laughs> when will be more weird Half-Life mods? If you send me to the my contact form a list of weird Half-Life mods and they're good, I I might check them out. I don't know any off the top of my head. Can you tell us the story of Chris Kermit and the Cucumber? Since it's Christmas. Well, you see, long ago, there was a Christmas tale. Kermit was a lonely frog, so he decided to go on Omegle. <laughs> Hey! Got something for you. Oh no! 
Yeah. This is always like one of my favorite rooms in the randomizer. Because any of these treasure chests could have like some of the best items in the game. Kermit wants to make sure his adoring fans eat their vegetables. That's all it is. Hey, I got a cucumber. Maybe you should check this out. Remember, eat your vegetables and brush your teeth. Oh. Oh, thank you, Kermit. I was worried something different was happening. No. No, no, no. Eat your vegetables and brush your teeth. With my jizz. No, Kermit, please. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. <sighs> yep. Torpedoed another holiday. Kermit Teeth. Why are there so many angles of this? I guess this was a real thing. They, like, built a Kermit teeth puppet. Oh. Well. The way human brains work, next time you hear this beeping noise, you're gonna think about Kermit with teeth. The association has been sealed. The pact... The pact has been sealed. Alright, so we talked about the poisonous frog, whose asshole needs to be licked. We talked about Kermit with a cucumber. We talked about... Um, how video cards work. And emulation. Anything left, or...? Oh, we're, we're good then. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're, we're done. Breakfast opinions. Oh, we can't go back from all this. We have to go... We have to go higher. Like Rem Lazar. We, we gotta go higher. We gotta talk about Gonzo's nose. What video, video do you do your movie reviews in? It will be its own video. You'll see it. It'll be Spider-Man and, uh... Uh... Matrix movie review video. It's not out yet. Because I've been streaming. But tomorrow... Maybe, um... Johnny, if you're watching, can you upload the movie review? As well as whatever video you're gonna upload tomorrow, or broadcast. If he- if he's here. If not, I'll just tell him. Oh, he's got this. Alright, cool. Pay no attention to the average middle-aged man standing by the sign. Leave him alone. When I was a kid, I thought when you hit middle age, you just had to get a mustache. That was part of it. That, and I had this weird book that covered the phases of, like, a kid's life. And it went from... I mean, this is an early 90s book, but it went from, like, 
you know, this person it was this person's whole life. It's maybe about 20 pages, and it was big words, big pictures, and it was a kid. Then the kid goes to school and then college and then gets a, you know, job. And then by the end of the book, before, like, old, old, the kid is cooking mushrooms. And I thought that when you became an adult, you just had to fry mushrooms. And I was really scared of that. I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to fry mushrooms. I was like, man, being an adult looks fucking boring. And yet here I am as an adult playing Link to the Past and talking about Kermit's cucumber. So no, I think I, I think I hit the lottery. I also cook mushrooms, for the record. Ah, the Book of Medora. Whether you can read the language of the Hylian people. Thank you, Random Sage. Now here's the question I have. Is this... Elf-like wizard man... One of the sages? Just hiding here? Like, it's never addressed. We come from France. How many other sages are left? Because there's Sasrahala, there's this weird... His name is... Agina. Is it really? I don't believe that. Where do you even find this information out? Anyway. Are there other sages in the light world? Because I know there's some in the dark world that got turned into broccoli. But I'm wondering, are there others that look like that in the light world? To open the way to go forward, make your wish here and it will be granted. Mountain Old Man is probably one of them. Yeah, that makes sense. Sazrahala is the descendant of a sage. Okay, so then maybe these are descendants, or they're just wise old, like, Hylians. And then the other wise ones... Um, turns into broccoli in the dark world. Vinny, it's not Sazrahala. How do you say it then? Tell me how to say it. Say it out loud in the chat. It's Sahazra... Sahazrala? Sahazrala. Hmm. M. Night Shyamalan? Sazrahala? Ajina's role is minor compared to that of his brother Sazrahala. Sazra... Sazrala. Oh, yeah, there's no other A after the S. Okay, got it. Sazrala. Sa has Fuck that name. He's one of three characters apart from the Seven Maidens that is a direct descendant from the Seven Sages who appeared during the course of the game, the other two being Saz... Sahasrala and the Lost Old Man on Death Mountain. So there's three in the Light World. Okay, cool. So there's Angina, there's Old Man on the Mountain, and there's Sephiroth. Sarsaparilla? Then who's the broccoli head? Maybe that's not a sage. Maybe that's just some weirdo. Oh. Wait, so the broccoli head is just some dude from J the Jersey Shore? Oh. There's Ajita, there's Heartburn, there's Indigestion. There's Avasarala, Salmonella. Pepto. <laughs> Wasn't Mel Brooks? 
called Pepto in one of his movies for some reason. I think it was the movie High Anxiety, and he's named after Pepto Bismol, and I think it's a Hitchcock tribute. I think. But then again, this is all um, prehistoric references. Did you know there's also a dude named Monty Python? Who made comedy in the late 60s? That was his name. He invented comedy. He was friends with Hitchcock and showed him every cut of the movie for his approval. Isn't High Anxiety not one of Mel Brooks' best movies, though? I don't remember it. It's been too, too many years, but... That's not, like, regarded as one of his classics, by any means. It's okay. It's no Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein. But, I mean, not much is, truthfully, when you have movies that fucking funny. Spaceballs is good. I grew up with Spaceballs. I like it. Not my favorite Mel Brooks, but I have a lot of nostalgia for it. And it is a good parody of Star Wars. A lot of good classic moments. Then they did a Spaceballs TV show. And it was like Flash animation. And it was like a couple years back. And I watched a YouTube channel. I never saw the show, but I watched a YouTube channel cover it. And apparently it was really bad. It was, like, cursed clip art version of Spaceballs, right? Ugh, what a shame. I like Robin Hood Men in Tights. That movie is fucking funny. I tried to derail the stream into TNG talk. Well, inevitably, someone always sends me the Captain Picard Let It Snow. So... That's kind of Christmas relevant. But TNG is also kind of like a comfort food. That's an easy show for me to just throw on, and... It's... weird because the show is thought-provoking, but I can kind of turn my brain off while watching it because I know the episodes pretty well. There it is. Do you think spoof movies will ever make a comeback? They gotta be good. Like, spoof movies from the late 70s and 80s were actually, like, genre-based. Like, Airplane and Top Secret. I mean, the Zucker movies, the Zazz movies were really good for that. But then it became Remember This Reference. I mean, Red Letter Media talked about this. But uh, spoof movies need to move away from Remember This and move into, like, let's spoof a genre. But Spaceballs did a good job. It, it did a good job telling its own story while also making fun of Star Wars a little bit and its merchandising. That's the thing about the new Spider-Man movie. You'll, you'll, you know, see my review eventually, but what I'll say about it is, it's not just remember this. It is that too, but the characters actually feel, like, correct, and like they have a purpose. Even if the story that brought them together makes almost no sense, 
because like a weird Doctor Strange thing goes wrong. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense if you really think about it. But when they get the characters together, it's actually like they give the characters arcs. And, um... I don't know, it just feels like... It feels like it's not just remember this thing, it, it feels like... We're gonna try to do something with these characters. It really worked for me. Meanwhile, I'm trying to, like, watch the Hawkeye show, just to have something to watch when I burn through my episodes of other stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's okay. I like Jeremy Renner. I like, you know, the actress opposite Jeremy Renner. But, I don't know, I guess it's just kind of more predictable marble <laughs> Marble. <laughs> That's what I liked about the Loki show at first. Loki was doing some really cool shit, and then it kind of devolved into... Like, the character didn't even feel like the character anymore. And I just, by the end of it, I was just like, ugh, what a shame. Yeah, WandaVision had the same problem. That's why How To With John Wilson is the best show on TV, because it will never disappoint you. It's just about dead rats on the street of New York City. And scaffolding, and the penis stretching. Ow. Ow. Are you watching The Expanse? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm caught up. By the way, this effect in 1991... Mental. How good this effect was. Like, seeing something, like, hover like this in segments. Loved it. Did you know that Jeremy Renner released a mobile app? What? Is the parking experience in New York really as absurd as John Wilson experience? Yeah, but I don't live in the city part of New York. I live in the, the, the burbs a little bit, kind of. Staten Island, there's parking. That's one of the nice things. He charges people to interact with him? Oh. Well, isn't that also... OnlyFans and... Also the app where you get David Hayter to talk about hogs? Kinda, but not really. He shut it down. Does refusing to pay count as interacting? <laughs> That's interesting, though. Okay, well, I didn't know he did that. There was an Italian Jeremy Renner? I don't know what that means. Some app dev paid him a ton of money to do that. I, okay, I can see like the, the app dev explaining it to him. Like, no, this good, trust me. We make app to get there. Okay, people buy tokens to touch to you, talk to you rather. And then you make money, it's easy money, bro. Look at those glamour shots. Get to know Jeremy and other fans. Do you get to LARP with Jeremy Renner, like in the show?
I mean, the only difference between that and me streaming is that I'm a hundred times more of a nobody, but also you can just choose not to pay a goddamn... a goddamn thing if you want to watch this shit. But... I, I guess... it was pretty different? Okay. I'm still not understanding the concept of this thing. Truthfully, it's very weird. Watch and interact with our two different things. Well... Yeah, I guess so. Especially if you have a large audience and then they spend money to have time talking to you, as opposed to just a drop in the well, a drop in the ocean that is the chat. Because the, the randomness of, will streamer read this? What you could pay? The app was basically him posting the same things he posted over Instagram, but you could give him money. The app also had no way to talk to other people, nor access, ta access hashtags. It was weird. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Jeremy Renner. I love you, Jeremy. Yeah, got something for you. <laughs> Spend twenty dollars on tokens so I can show you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Are there Jesus apps where you have to pay to like communicate with like Jesus? You don't answer that. I don't want to know the answer to that question. It, it will probably depress me in more... in more ways than one. It's called going to church. I should know that. Having grown up Catholic, I should know that. Can I tell you the best thing in the world? Is when you finish Zora's Domain and the sound of the waterfall and rushing water is no longer in your ear. It's like when your ears pop after being in a plane. That was always one of the things I most looked forward to after all this traveling. You're using your gift of good Kermit voice for evil. No! What do you want, little man? Do you have something to ask me? I want the flippers. I don't just give flippers away for free. I sell them for 500 rupees a pair. Look at his face. It's so good. Now, here's the thing. In the randomizer, there's a chance that you would pay 500 rupees to get one rupee. Whose Kermit emote is that? That's Joel's? That's such a good Kermit. That's a oh, Aw. It was a bad time to click out of the game. A moral Kermit new season of Vine Sauce. Yeah! I think you... Oh, it's so good. You're almost, like, contractually obligated to have a Kermit emote. You know, I've got Kermit, please. Joel has the perfect Kermit face. Oh, wait, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> 
So there's two items you can throw in here. One is the shield. So you get the red shield. It, it, honestly, it's not as cool looking as the other one, but it's more powerful. The red shield looks like a T-bone steak. Oh. Yeah. yeah I, guess, I guess it kind of does, doesn't it? And red boomerang. You know, another reason I wanted to play this is when I got the Zelda 50th anniversary Game & Watch. Cool item, yet overpriced. Just because, you know, it's three games. They're good games. Zelda 1, 2, and Link to the Link's Awakening. Um, and a couple little bonus games and some stuff, but it, it's a cool thing. I would have wanted more for the anniversary of Zelda, but I ended up playing through Zelda 1 almost in its entirety, and it's still a fun game to play. Like, I still really enjoy going through that game. Did I say 50th anniversary? That would mean that Zelda came out in 1972. Mental. I can't believe Zelda has been with us as a culture for that long. Oh, you still remember the 1492 bit. Wow. Save warp. Not gonna upgrade. Uh, uh I, oh, I know I did. What upgrade? What was there another upgrade? Because I know there's um, you can swim. In... Well, there's another bottle. There's, uh, by the Ice Palace. There's another thing, I think, right? But I'm not sure if there's another upgrade at the moment. Someone said, I hope you're feeling better and having a chill Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm feeling better, at the very least. I'm just gonna bring Mr. Magoo up to the top here. Watch your step, there's holes in the ground. Could you turn right here? Young man, are you also going to the mountain to look for the golden power? Just ahead is a mountain full of monsters. Many people have vanished in this mountain while looking for the golden power. I don't want to steer you wrong, so please don't get too involved in such a mad quest. No, I'm feeling better, finally. It took a while. I'm still a little sniffly. So, yeah, the, he's saying that his granddaughter was uh, abducted by Aghanim to be used the, the power of the sages to break the seal. I like that if you do this, you can just have the old man follow you backwards. Bomb and arrow capacity? Oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm, the, the arrow capacity would be nice, but I think I'm good. I'm gonna do the Tower of Hera, and then maybe I'll do that next time. Because my goal is to get the Master Sword, and if I have a little extra time, I will go into the Dark World. That- that'll be today's... ...thing. To complete your quest, you'll need the Moon Pearl, which is in the top of the tower of this mountain. Okay.
Yeah, I'm kind of glad that we switched Link's hair back to the goofy pink approach. It's such a weird decision to have had a Link's hair pink when it was very clearly blonde in the other games, and even in the instruction manual of this game, and the Super Nintendo had colors to spare. You have to refresh to see it. Dave, did you replace your e Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I'm gonna refresh, Chatty, and I'm gonna see. I think I know what you did. Did you add a cucumber to your Kermit emote? Don't say yeah. Don't say yeah. No, I never had a Kermit. Um... No, can you post it, please? So I can see what you're talking about? What's going on? There's no cucumber in that emote. It's just regular Kermit. It's just... Oh, okay. Oh, oh no, no, no. Alright, you see, you're... You're a reasonable human being. Meanwhile, I'm thinking about Kermit having a cucumber. Penny, why are you obsessed with Kermit's cucumber? It was the curse of knowledge that I was granted several days ago, and I can't stop thinking about it. Um, I know there's stuff I could get on this mountain, but I think for time's sake I want to go to the Tower of Hera. So I bet people who have never seen this game before are a little confused. Oh, who are you, Mr. Bunny? This world is like the real world, but evil has twisted it. The golden power is what changed your shape to reflect what is in your heart and mind. I'm always changing my mind, so I turn into a ball. But if you have a ball called the Moon Pearl, you can keep your original shape here. What do you want? Do you have something to say to me, silly rabbit? Came here to get the golden power, but now I'm a freak and I can't get back to the real world. If only I had the Moon Pearl from the Tower of Hera, I could get back to my original shape. I've got a good reason to be stressed out, so back off, shoo! I wonder if there's a version of the randomizer where you can be that... This is gonna sound silly for someone who's played this game a hundred times, but I don't remember where to go to stop being bunny. Oh, I have the mirror. Dumbass. I was looking for a spot that I had to step on. I forgot that I actually was given the mirror already by the old man. Wow. Ten thousand hours of Link to the Past experience. To the point where I miss the heart piece. Master Sword yet. Now, if you're a speedrunner and you're live for a big event and you forget one obvious thing, like, that's not gonna happen too much because, you know, they play the games a lot, but if you miss one obvious thing, like how to not be a bunny for a couple seconds, that's gotta suck. But there are so many, like, video game tropes that are just, like, stuck in my head forever. Like, things that I don't think I'll ever forget, and then I play the game again and I forget.
Okay. That sort of happened. Did you ever hear about Bonesaw's Jack and Daxter run? No. Isn't Bonesaw Macho Man in the first Spider-Man? Bonesaw! Rises to the top. I had a macho man phase. Just because I didn't watch wrestling as a kid, really. And then when I discovered his promos and his weird tics that he would do with his tongue, either because of just him or because of whatever he was on, um, he would make like weird faces. I really enjoyed discovering Macho Man for the first time. I mean, I always knew who he was because he was the Slim Jim guy. But yeah. Also, I found out my club cousin worshipped the Ultimate Warrior and wanted to look like him. So, there's an another little piece of lore I discovered recently. Vinny's life is considered lore. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's a... It's a weird thing to... Build yourself up as an... Like an internet character for people's amusement. But then also be a real person on the other side of that. That's been, um... That's been a fucking weird thing to come to terms with. I thought you were just a voice. Well, yeah, that too. You mean Jersey is real? I like how you said Jersey is like you're confused that New Jersey's real. I don't even live in Jersey. Meet VTuber when? Well, Nortz is ready to go. The old meat model that someone made a while back, I don't even know. I don't even know where that is anymore, but... It worked really well for a short time, and then it was updated and it worked less well. So, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind bringing meat back. No, no, I'm not going to tell the story of Club Cousin. There might be a clip on the Twitch channel, um, the Vine Sauce Twitch Clips channel that has that information. Um, oh, Dave, your emote, your Kermit is now animated. That's interesting. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Um... I can show it, because it's real small. Okay. No, that's a, that's a good, that's nice. That's really nice.
Kermit is very responsible and wants everyone to eat their vegetables. Vinny, what's your favorite vegetable? Oh, I, I love me a good gherkin. Uh, favorite vegetable is... I like zucchini. You can do a lot with it. And not just because it's shaped a certain way. Uh, it really is... I like... I like zucchini. Broccoli, Brussels sprout, asparagus, those are my favorites. Breakfast opinions? I don't know what you want me to say, I love breakfast food. I love a good pancake, um, bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, breakfast food is great. If I go to a diner and the options include breakfast food, I may, in fact, get that instead of dinner or lunch food. Come on. Fucking worm! WORM! Always with this fight. Always! Alright, well... That's three dungeons down. And I have time to get the Master Sword and a little bit more. Someone mentioned Eggs Benedict. I like Eggs Benedict a lot. That's a really nice food. That food is good food. I like my foods to sound like a villain. But have you had... There's a breakfast food that I want to tell you about. It's Eggs Benedict with a bunch of cucumbers. Like a batch of them. It's Eggs Benedict Cumberbatch. I'll see myself out. do mountain things now? There, I don't know if there's much mountain things to do right now. I mean... There might be a couple mountain things, but I'm not gonna... I don't think I'm gonna do those. Hang on a second. <laughs> Vinny, will you be doing a full playthrough of this? Yes. Yeah, this is only the first part of the game. I just wanted- I wanted to have- For those just joining, my goal was to have a vanilla playthrough of Link to the Past. Except this isn't a vanilla playthrough, it's the Redux version, which doesn't- it, it doesn't change a whole lot. It's minimal changes. I always do that. It's, um, some quality of life stuff. Like switching items with LNR, breaking pots with sword, a couple of 
sprites that are, you know, more in line with the instruction booklet. And some bug fixes, and also the Ice Palace matching the GBA version of the Ice Palace, which is a very good change. So yeah, I mean, it's close enough to vanilla. Ah, yeah! Vinny, Dave added the cuke. Yeah, no, I... Uh, you made it worse? What do you mean you made it worse? Oh. Yeah, that's... That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. You gotta be careful! Because some people do not approve of vegetables. Some people don't want people to eat their greens. also an important room in the randomizer because you can access it kind of early and three treasure chests is nothing to scoff at when you're trying to find important items except it's usually ten arrows Anyone remember when Vin lost his sanity over one piece of Triforce? I- I don't even remember that. What happened? You have to remind me. I don't think anyone actually knows. This was always one of my favorite moments in this game, because... After using this short little rinky-dink sword for so long, it was always nice to have, like, an upgrade. And remember, I didn't really have, you know, a lot of games as a kid, so... I couldn't just play a game where you could get a million swords. So for me, the Master Sword upgrade, that was like playing Skyrim and finding a new, um... A new sword that looks like shit, but the stats are better. Even though this doesn't look like shit. Uh, Sa Sa Sahasrala contacts you telepathically, Link. It is extraordinary that you won the Master Sword. That makes evil retreat. With this shining sword, I believe you can deflect the priest's evil powers. The destiny of this land is in your hands. Please, Link. What if Link just puts the sword back in and says, No. The selfish hero timeline. Link, help the soldiers are coming to the sanctuary. I.E.
that's the plot to at least 200 Newgrounds animations from 2008. Yeah. All fanfic that could have been done has been done. Link, you are second. You are second too late. I have failed. Zelda, the soldiers have abducted her, taken her to the castle. You must find her before the priest works his magic. Please, you are only hope. A second. Could get the third bottle. When I was a kid, I rented this game and sprinted into the walls of the church, and my sister gasped because I was disturbing the peace of the church. Wow. Well, I mean, that's. Nice. Did she later learn that video games are cartoons? <laughs> or... Some people still haven't learned that. Well, whenever something terrible happens in the world and a scapegoat is needed, video games are still used, so... Oh, oh, wait, 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 there is a location for fairies. Hang on. Video games caused the Pompeii incident, after all. I know, in Chernobyl, too. Look at the timing. Video games were just getting big again. It's just really easy to have a scapegoat of... It's obvious, I mean... You know. Then again, I don't wear green pajamas and run around with a sword and hi the fuck out of pots. And I've been playing Zelda my whole life. So... You did jump off a garage to roll like Link, didn't you? Every now and then, I forget that I tell the chat some of my stories. And then when I'm reminded, I'm like... Wow, I was a fucking idiot. Fucking idiots, all of them! Einstein must have had a heavy load. I wanted to see if it would negate damage. It negated damage. Didn't you also duel little Dicky in a pizza shop? Yeah, I pulled out a single leather glove and I smacked him over the face with it and then we fought. Like two civilized gentlemen. I actually, someone said, I actually broke my bed frame as a kid because I was running, because uh, I was rolling around like Solid Snake.
Well, when we were kids, we had a lot of energy. That energy from all the caffeine has to go somewhere. And if it includes you rolling around at the speed of sound... You know, so be it. I wonder how many children have injured themselves trying to, like, be Sonic in real life. Have you ever wondered why this castle has all this confusing shit in it? No? Alright. Aghanim changed the layout. Yeah, that's almost as dumb as the Force making everyone stupid in the prequels. Because uh, Palpatine used Sith dumb powers. Mm, I detect nothing wrong! Oh! Mm, heavy load Einstein must have had. Mace Windu sitting there. The, the fucking most badass Jedi in all the galaxy. I believe there is a disturbance in the Force. Hmm. Who could that be? The man who looks like Satan? Nah, probably not. I'm hungry! Feed me milk! More milk! Yes, Master Yoda. What about the Sith Lord? Ah! Milk! And it was all Palpatine that made that happen. No, I guess as Chancellor Palpatine didn't look like Satan. I guess he didn't. I mean, he was saying some weird shit. Like, there, there were clues all throughout the movies, but specifically the third one. I still think it's, it's rather dumb that it, they didn't quite figure it out earlier than that. But, you know. Listen, George Lucas, great world building. Those movies are, have been memed back into love and popularity. I get it. I feel it. I understand it. God, there's some fucking dopey shit in those movies. And no, the sequels being bad doesn't make the prequels better. I know Red Letter Media said that. I agree. They're fun to watch. They're fun to make fun of. But man, George needed, like, multiple people to check in on that script, especially dialogue coaches. But for what it's worth, all the extended lore that came out of it, I think is pretty great. So... You know, at least we got all that shit. Come stay at the Star Wars Sci-Fi Hotel. For $2,000 a night, you can watch a Twi'lek sing to you. Wait, this is great! I can't believe it! Oh my god, I'm in Star Wars? Is is Luke Star Wars gonna guide me through the hotel? Oh, oh, I wanna lose my virginity to a Twi'lek lady! Uh, we need to take this video off the internet forever. Here at Disney's Star Wars-themed hotel, you can live out your fantasies in an overpriced fucking nonsense experience that doesn't even look like Star Wars. You dopey fucks. Anyway. Aha, Link. I've been waiting for you. I was hoping I could make Zelda vanish in front of your eyes. Behold, the last moment of Princess Zelda. Yeah, when Aghanim is dressed like this, 
it looks a lot less goofy. The circlet looks more like a circlet. With this, the seal of the Seven Sages at last broken it is now only a matter of time before evil power covers this land. After all, the legendary hero cannot defeat us, the tribe of evil, when we are armed with the golden power. Oh ho, now I must go. Listen, just because I was rejected by a Twi'lek doesn't mean that I have anything against them. I want to stay at the Star Wars Hotel too, but I can't because it's booked into 2025. Oh, so you mean to say you'd like to be totally destroyed? Well, I can make your wish come true. Master Bugnet. I knew that was going to happen, and I stood there anyway. It's almost like you didn't even need to get the Master Sword. Vinny, does Slime Girls exist in the Star Wars universe? Why not? Kermit has a gherkin, and Yoda has a breadstick. And I- that's not a euphemism. Uh, well met, like the true hero that you are, but I am not ready to admit defeat yet. I will draw you into the dark world. No, I mean, he takes Luke's breadstick. And then, like, he kind of chews on it a little bit, but he doesn't actually eat it. Link at his eye. Saz- Sa- Sal. I'm communicating to you across the void through telep telepathy. <laughs> the place where you now stand was the sacred realm, but evil turned... Evil power turned into the dark world. The priest has broken the sage's seal and opened a gate to link the worlds at Hyrule Castle. In order to save this half of the world, the light world, you must win back the golden power. You must also rescue the seven maidens who Aghanim sent to the dark world. As members of the bloodline of the Seven Sages, they have power that will surely help you. The Maidens are locked in hidden dungeons full of evil creatures and dangerous traps. The Dark Palace should be your first goal in this world, Link. I can rely on only you. Please make this old man's wishes come true, I beg you. Hell yeah, Dark World music. Alright, I'm gonna play a little bit more. Eastern Palace. Eastern Palace. That's where I'll stop. Well, it's not... Yeah, it's the Dark... Uh, it's Dark Palace, it's called? Oh, right. Okay, that makes more sense. Well, where the Eastern Palace once was. I just... Once I get into the Dark World, I hear the music, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to play a little bit more. I always like this weird, like, clam thing. What is it? It's very strange. It just kind of hops around, chomping around in air. Kind of, kind of dumb. I mean, it doesn't have eyes. Do you ever, like, think about how much it sucks to get the Dark World? Uh, sorry, to get to the Master Sword. Get the Master Sword, get to the Dark World, and then suddenly your Master Sword 
is like a twig against like strong, muscly Cyclops men. Also, these statues to me look like pig babies. about it. Pull on the leftmost statue. <laughs> oh yeah. Forgot about that one. Does Dark World Hyrule count as a liminal space? No, I don't think so. In my humble opinion. Scumble. Mini, I represent the Federation of Pro Eggplant Individuals. And we are very disturbed by your zucchini answer. All I want to say is you had P, E, and I for pro eggplant individuals, and you didn't think to add words with the letter N and S anywhere in there so that you could create the acronym penis. What are you thinking? Pro Eggplant National Individual Society. Where do I get my membership card, someone said. Uh, I can't think of a witty answer, but where do you buy... Uh, the sex, the, 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 the store that sells sex, the sex store. Yes, that place. that you disturb my peaceful map? I will give this to you if you go away! Mono just resubbed for 81 months. It's a long time, 81 months. Just remember, if you get to 81 months, you get to be a mod, too. Note, this is a joke. Note. Limezalicious, sorry, Limealicious just raided you with a party of 579 viewers. Thank you, Limealicious. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you and to all that have joined. I, uh, I appreciate the raid. I hope everyone's doing well. It's not Limezalicious, like I think it is in my mind sometimes. It is on Twitter. Oh, right, okay. Wait, what the fuck is Twitter? Mm. 
nothing, don't worry about it. Alright. You just missed me talking about Yoda's breadstick. I feel like for people that know my streams and my videos, it's not even that much of a surprise to hear me talk about that. Now, well, yeah, I guess that's, that's what Vin talks about. There's the broccoli. I told you there's a broccoli dude. Is this a hooker? No, no, a sage. Wrong word. You're new here, aren't you? Did, did you come here looking for the golden power? Well, you're too late. It will obey only the first person who touches it. The man who last claimed the golden power wished for this world. It reflects his heart. Yes, I came here because of greed for the golden power, and look what happened to me. To restore the sacred realm, a person worthy of the golden power must defeat the man who created this place. Until that time, I am stuck in this bizarre shape. But what a mischievous thing to leave lying around, the golden power. Triforce. So if you're greedy, you enter the dark world and become broccoli. Or a small shrub. Okay. Dinny, are you aware of the new OOT Space World demo recreation with fully playable dungeons and new medallion spells? I would play that with some state, uh, save states, stave, save states, and check out various locations. Maybe in the future. Dave states. I would check that out, but I wouldn't want to play through the whole thing. I'd, I'd just, like, do a little showcase of all the stuff and tell you how I feel about it. <laughs> Which is basically any and all streaming anyway. The file select has different pre-made tours available. Oh. Well, brilliant then. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. I don't know when, but... Maybe let me finish my scummy Mario playthrough of both um, Mario World from Memory and then scummy Mario 64. I'm Kiki the Monkey Kiki. I love rupees more than anything. Can you spare me 10 rupees? Good choice. I will accompany you for a while. Shortest amount of time for a side character ever. If you give me a hundred rupees, I will open the entrance for you. I also like how this palace is monkey themed. There's like gorilla statues, but yet on the inside there are no new monkeys. And that's it, we're done with Kiki. Kiki the monkey is now gone. There's these little piglets, which I always thought that they were like pigs with green masks. I don't know what they really are. Remember though, things look different on a CRT TV. And the pixels kind of blur together a little bit, and the aspect ratio and all that fun stuff. I mean, yeah, they're Helmosaurs, but to me they looked like little piglets. What's a CRTV? It's a TV channel for cats and rats. There's a monkey. See, there's some loose monkey theming here. Not not a whole lot, but enough. Um, what's a CRTV? It really is is it an old old TV with a like a curved screen that has low latency for um, video games that people still use it for Smash. Cathode ray tube TV. 
and um, it's blurry. So when you play, the pixels look nice and nice and smushed together. But I'm sure you've seen some posts, some of you, on the internets about how, like, these games were designed with that in mind. So, like, if you see, like, uh, sprites for Final Fantasy on a CRT, they actually look pretty great. But when you see them in, like, pixel-perfect form, it's not quite as good. Like, there's definitely an artistry to designing for cathode ray tube. The CRT Twitter account. I don't know about that, but I've seen individual, like, um, images from various games and comparisons, and I thought they were very interesting. But I guess when you're a kid, like, it doesn't really... your, your kind of imagination fills in the rest. And seeing the sprites all blurred together like that... I don't know, there's just kind of like a, a tactile feel to them. C CRTs also have no input lag, unlike Luca de Tuve. Oh, okay, right. That's that's what I was saying before, right. Is that the same as Duvda? Yeah. You can watch Duvda in Hood. Sort of like natural anti-aliasing. But why do we not like aliasing? You can go under like different names and stuff with an alias. And like there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Especially if you want some anonymity. I know, I'm talk I listen, that was Kring. But then again, it is Chris Kringle. I like how there's probably people that think that I'm very quick-witted. But then there's an equal amount of people that are like, Is this guy fucking stupid? Hearing me talk? <laughs> I wonder if there's much of an in-between. Who thinks you're quick-witted? Um... Uh... Um... Hmm. Vinny, how are you so quick at being stupid? Being stupid is an art. Like, trolling is an art. Yeah. You know, the whole... Vinny is quick-witted at figuring things out in video games at times. I mean, at times, but then, like, you watch my Outer Wilds, and I thought going into the cave taught you their language. So... I have selective intelligence, and I don't know why it activates when it does, but sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, I figured that out pretty quickly. Or I beat that boss on the first try, and then there are times where I'm like, is that a rabbit? I don't even know what the context of that is, but... See, the problem I have with, like, a lot of Zelda games, but specifically this one, is that I have all these rupees, and I already am, like, done collecting rupees, pretty much. So now, again, I have max rupee. They're fun to collect because they're shiny. 
Um, you could have spent them on upgrades. Oh yeah, well I guess I could spend- I mean... The game is not that hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So you don't really need to do that, and I think you also have to spend money on the big bomb. I know the hammer is to the left, but I, I think I wanted to make sure this was open. So yeah, it's not... like... The collecting rupee bit of this game, and Zelda games in general, usually leave a lot to be desired. I feel like you just end up maxing them out too quickly. And then if, in Wind Waker, it's like, no, you need all those. Because Tingle wants them. And he wants a lot of them. Hmm. I should have used that key on that door leading to the hammer. Oh, now, now I have to find another key. If you want max upgrades, it's something like over 1500. I mean, it's something to work towards at least. Did you have a good Crimbus, Vinny? Do you want the real answer? Yeah, it was alright. It's the least Christmas feeling Christmas I think I've ever experienced. And, um... It's alright. I want a fake answer. Okay, I got a Porsche. Vinny, you don't drive. I don't? Well, it's a fake answer anyway, so... You like cars? Okay! <laughs> Don't you like when R2-D2 malfunctions and he goes... Okay, so, I still don't have a key. And I think I know where one is, but I have to go back to the beginning of the dungeon. So that's pretty sick. Have you listened to the Always Sunny podcast? No, I haven't. I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Well, all I had to do was follow the damn- no, was- all I had to do was just use the- For a minute, I was gonna use the key, but I was like, well then if I use the key here, then I'm gonna need it later, and I'm gonna have to find another key, but I'll have a hammer instead. And this ended up being the long way. I don't know if this is where the key is, though. Ten arrows. Yeah, this is my first time playing the Redux version of Link to the Past, but if you watched me play this, you'd think it was my first time playing Link to the Past sometimes. Did you ever watch Pluto Nash Bongyort? 
Uh, what? Well, or did you watch it this year? Is there a meme I'm missing about a yearly Pluto Nash watch through? Yeah, this is not the right way at all. Huh. It's a TikTok challenge. I'll take more harmless Pluto Nash uh, TikTok challenges rather than swallow a four inch screw. TikTok challenge. Eat lava. Steel sink. Wait, what? What? Steel sink. Did you visit your Animal Crossing island on Toy Day? I did yesterday, and I. It was gonna air today, but it, it it'll air uh, soon. But yes, I did. I visited and I gave uh, Octobot, Cephalobot, a uh, toy. Man, I'm still lacking a key. Huh. That's something. That's- that's something. Fall off the other side of the bridge? Have I- Have I not done that? You missed the skull with the button under the bridge. Oh. Did you hear that the director of the new Batman movie, The Batman, said that his influence on this Batman was Kurt Cobain? <sighs> oh yeah. No, that's nothing. Wait. How did I miss that? How did I miss that? Luigi! I guess Batman is one of those th heroes that you can go a couple different ways with. But it feels like we've just had, like, dark Batman for years and years and years. And that's the character, but there's also the, the goofy version. And I think the Tim Burton movie struck a good balance. Not goofy, but like campy, a little, little bit of camp. It heightened. So I think you can kind of... You can kind of do a, a couple different things with Batman. I'm not a huge... I don't read comic books, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but... Based on the movies, I would say that my approach to Batman would be in between the Michael Keaton ones... ...and the, uh... ...the Nolan ones. But the Nolan ones are, are great movies, but... ...the humor in, in those movies, to me, came from the side characters... And the villains more more than the Batman himself, and I guess that's where you know you don't want the Batman to be a silly lad; you want him to be serious, I guess. So maybe that's the right approach after all. I just feel Kurt Cobain is a weird influence for Batman. Is like the Robert Pattinson version going to be like just a depressed, joyless? I don't know.
We'll see. I don't really care that much. The only superhero movie I'm actually kind of interested in is the new Doctor Strange movie. Just because I, I like Sam Raimi, and I like weird, psychedelic, strange nonsense. But... I've said it before. People Are Strange should have been the trailer song. <laughs> Where am I going? Oh, this way. Sleeping man thing I dislike, yes. That's how it goes. Alright. As someone who's played this game for a hundred thousand hours, I sure get lost very easily. What do you think about Spider-Verse 2? I like Spider-Verse 1, and I like the new Spider. So... That's fine. I'll probably enjoy. But again, like, you know, it's not, like, my most anticipated thing. It's just something that I know will come out, and I'll probably watch it and enjoy it. What do you think about real spiders? Don't like real spiders. If Cobain is Batman, does that mean Chris Novoselic is going to be Robin? Could you imagine? A five foot five Batman with a six foot seven Robin. You know what? That would actually be kind of great. Do it. And like Robin throws his stuff up into the air and tries to catch them and hits his head. tell you something that is going to make me seem dumb, which I know some of you would not believe it. Because how could I, the person who says dumb things all the time, actually be legitimately dumb? You know the song Batman Smells? Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Laid an Egg? Well, when I was younger, I didn't put two and two together that Robin was a bird. And I was like, why would Robin lay an egg? Oh, there's people in chat that are just getting it now. Oh, God. Well, congratulations. Welcome to my world. Too bad. Not too bad of a fight. This one used to trip me up a lot as a kid. Vinny, no, that was the activation phrase for over 10,000 sleeper agents. <laughs> uh, Tom Scott did a YouTube video about that. The Robin lays an egg. He polled different people in different countries to see if the Simpsons influenced um, their version of the Batman Jingle Bells rhyme. So, it's actually kind of interesting to see what different people had. Okay. My name is Tom Scott. Uh, well, The Simpsons did a version of that rhyme that ended up becoming the main version of it for a lot of people. Link, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of evil monsters. Thank you. This world used to be... Clutches is such good, like, bad guy speak. 
This world used to be the sacred realm where the Triforce was hidden, but because Ganon, the boss of Thebes, wished it, the world was transformed. I'm sure he's intending to conquer even our light world after building his power here. He's trying to open a larger gate between worlds near the castle using our powers, but the gate is not open completely yet. If we seven maidens come together, we can break the barrier around Ganon's hiding place. I will tell you where the other girls are held. I believe you will destroy Ganon. I will return to my original form at the time. Do you understand? No. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. So, can I get the third sword upgrade, um, now? The second sword upgrade? The golden sword? Uh, the, the tempered sword? I think I can. Or do I need the hookshot? Because if I go to Thieves' Den, I can get the gloves, lift up the thing, save the frog, then have the frog temper the sword. Wait, I need to do dungeon two first, so I need the hookshot. Because I used to be able to do it early. When do you get the green sword? Hey! Got something for you. Yeah. You just need the mitts from four. So technically, I could... <laughs> technically, I could... ...do that now, because I just need to get the gloves from four. What would you need the hookshot for? Various things that are not this particular thing that I'm trying to do. But here, I'm gonna do some upgrading so I can spend the the money. Right up here. All right. I wish this was a faster process. For today, you will have big trouble. This is one of the reasons I don't do too many of the upgrades in this game. It is kind of a slow, annoying process. Accidentally hit five. Just keep ramming into it, it'll reprompt you. You don't have to leave the room entirely. And I hope you need to leave enough room for my fist! Get up, get It's good. Yes, Plunjo will be propagated. Thank you, Shy Guy, for making this wonderful emote. And thank you, Jackal, for allowing me to um, use it on the channel. Very, ni very nice. Plungo. I want to carry more bombs or arrows. Uh, arrows this time. And I'll do the, the bombs one. Now I leave, I think. <laughs> when, um, when I was watching The Matrix, there was a scummy looking urinal. And, uh... Oh, now you can toss 50. Right, okay, that's good. So now upgrades are easier. Forgot about that. And, and, like, whenever I see, like, scummy-looking urinals, I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to recreate the look of the first Smith fight. But when I see a scummy-looking urinal, I... 
immediately think of the Sopranos game pulp, uh, pulping the guy's face into the urinal. Now. Yeah, those Sopranos corruptions were, like, absolutely amazing. That was this year, right? That was, like, the beginning of the year? Like... Yeah, that, that was maybe... some of the best corruptions in a while. Like, the piss filling up the room. That was five years ago? Oh, that's cool. At some point, someone's gonna say that, Vinny, the Sopranos corruptions were five years ago. Like, all of the, you know... All of the moments of my life will be lost in time like tears and rain, except the Sopranos Corruptions. Vinny, you have to let go of the Sopranos. I did when the movie came out. The soup Rano's. Now that would actually be the great a great name for a soup store. <laughs> a bunch of Italians making soup. Okay, I think I'm good on the upgrading now. Alright, so... That was fun. Item screen looks like this right now. I can get another bottle. Uh, I'm not sure, I forget where the fourth bottle is, but... There's one under the bridge, get that eventually. I can get a couple more of these medallions. And, um, then I can get the good mitt and the better sword. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good Christmas. I just like playing this game, even if it's not randomized, or if it is, or whatever. But the Redux version, all the little quality of life stuff, it's very, very minor, but it's good. Alright, so once again, um, take care. I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow, but, uh, you know, I'll be streaming probably a little Skyrim next week. And we'll continue our Skyrim bingo. Uh, I don't know if I'll be streaming more Zelda or if I'll just be playing it on my own. But I'll figure that out as time goes on. And uh, we'll do eventually more of that scummy Mario stuff as well. But, uh... That, and maybe there's a couple things I had in mind for a New Year's-ish stream or video, but I'm not sure if the thing I'm thinking of is going to be released by then. In any case, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Um, stop posting that Kermit emote and have a good Christmas. And um, I'm very happy that I could play some games for you. Good night.